Known by its acronym INC, the church has more than 80 congregations in Canada, and a visit to Toronto by its spiritual leader draws a crowd. We're having a worship service. That's why we don't want you here. But clearly, the crew from the Fifth Estate is not welcome. What's your leader hiding from? There's nothing to hide. And the banners aren't only to welcome INC's leader, but also to keep us from getting a picture of him. For over a century, INC has been run by one family, but not without controversy. Some former members allege church funds are being used improperly. They would segregate some of the cash, a good amount of the cash. Church members have been accused of intimidation and worse. If you had stayed in the Philippines, would we be talking today? I, won't, I wouldn't be alive anymore. They really needed to silence me. The Canadian government granted a former member refugee status, finding the INC has, quote, the means and the motivation to seriously harm or kill him. The INC denies all wrongdoing, calling the allegations scandalous, outrageous, and untrue. There are two cards. There's the black car and the hump. Let's gear up. Over the course of its investigation, the Fifth Estate encountered intimidation of its own. Host Bob McEwen and producer Timothy Sawa worked on the story. Okay, Tim, let's start with the idea. I mean, you and I have worked on a number of stories together. Yeah. Getting accountability in a story is never a, a particularly pleasant experience if someone doesn't want to talk to you. Yeah. But what was unique about what you encountered on this story? I can say this is the first time we've ever had to ask the police for help in all my years of doing this. But I guess the context for this is this is a church whose members have been accused, as we just saw, of violence, uh, kidnapping, even murder. So we knew that kind of going in and knew that we had to sort of be careful and take this seriously. And um, the day we were in Toronto, when we heard the leader was going to be in town from the Philippines, they were, as you saw, they had penned us in with signs, they shone flashlights in our lenses, they were filming us the entire time. It was quite intimidating. But afterwards, when we tried to leave, that's when it got more serious. Um, they followed us in multiple vehicles, and there was, on more than one occasion, they were sort of drifting us off the road. And that's when we realized this was more serious than we wanted it to be, and we actually stopped and asked the police for help. I mean, Bob, you've, you've had a long career both at CBC and in the States. Mm -hmm. um, put us some context here in terms of the things that you've experienced. Where does this rank? Well, it, wars, of course. You know, you go to a war zone, and I think I've been to something like 15 of them. And you expect to be tense all the time. You expect to be under physical threat all the time. That's not what this, what this was. M most stories, many stories that we do, uh, there is a, a psychological or emotional tension either on our part or the part of the people we're, we're dealing with. This was different from that. This was a case of them wanting to physically intimidate us in a way that I don't think I've, I've experienced before. So let's get another look at, at some of what you're talking about. This happened in Sacramento, I believe. Let's take a look. From the beginning of the day, they followed us, they harassed us, they did everything they could to keep us from doing our jobs. Fair enough. It's all in a day's work. But then we got back to our vehicle afterwards. All of our tires were slashed. You can see where the, the knife went in here. Look at this one. This one's totally deflated because it's been slashed. Now, I'm not even going to pretend that I would be no. cool as a cucumber if I came back to our vehicle to find tires slashed. What was your reaction in that moment? I, I think we were both somewhat relieved that we hadn't gone to the Philippines, where this church has its headquarters and where many of the allegations against its members are being laid. Because it might, our, our first in, initial reaction was, that might not just have been our tires. And I mean, let's be honest, we were talking about a, a huge SUV. Yeah. These are big tires. This we, is we not calculated just a their, prick, right? We calculated they're worth about $1,000 a piece. And the hole, literally, my fist could have gone into the hole that was gouged in each of them. So here's what people may not know about what it's like, you know, on the road, as we say, as you go in a crew. I mean, you have tremendous experience, Bob. So do you, Timothy. And, and the producer is, in effect, in a charge uh, mm -hmm. the shoot on the road. Mm -hmm. So these things are happening. It's yeah. your job to manage the crew's safety. That's right. What was this like for you? Well, I can say we all get training in this kind of stuff. I know you've had it as yeah. well and Bob as well. We learn how to drive in sort of tense situations and we learn how to 
manage people when they're following us. But I guess what you don't learn and aren't taught is when you're in the moment, as Bob mentioned, the psychological aspect, it wears on you. And I think the main thing I made sure I was doing was just checking in with people. If it's been four or five hours of this, um, how's everybody feeling? Do we need a break? Beyond that, the only other sort of safety related decisions I would say was is this a situation where we're going to film for the story mm -hmm. or is this a situation where we're going to stop filming and make sure we're safe? Because you don't necessarily know those moments are happening until they're right yeah. upon you. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've got these quick decisions to make. We collectively made the decision that we were going to go with this, that we were going to document it, that we were going to stop and engage them and talk to them about what they were doing and why. And, you know, when we're dealing with a story like this one, about unusual allegations against a religious organization and its members, corruption, financial corruption, kidnapping, murder. It, it ups the ante, but you also want to be able to tell it in a way that people can understand and appreciate what the severity of the allegations is. Looking forward to seeing the, the story itself on the Fifth Estate. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Thanks.